about all those things and overcoming any obstacles so you can read your dream. Okay? Thank you. Yep. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Tara. Uh, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit, but I, uh, but I really like to go ahead and uh, you know, take your questions about life. I think that would be, be more relevant. Um, but let me just, uh, maybe I'll, see, I'll, I'll set the tone here with, um, with sort of this perspective. You know, there are, there are a lot of things in life uh, that we are not in control of. In fact, we control very little of what happens in life. But we do control ourselves, what we are committed to, what we focus, what we do with our energy. Raise your hand to get frustrated with things that you can't control. Be honest, okay? You know, part of part of understanding what you control and what you can't is, is having enough self-awareness, enough discipline to kind of understand what you are doing with your personal energy. And when I I believe when you give it away the things you can't control. Who gives away you? you give away money? I mean, when someone gives you money, you just, you know, like, throw it on the ground? Just give it to anybody? Someone, your friends, just give me some money, you give it to them? Well, why do you give your energy away? Why do you give your energy, your emotion, your, your heart, your soul, why do you give those, give that energy away to things you can't control? You don't give your money away because you value it. Someone had to work hard for it. Well, that's the way you should kind of think about your personal energy. What, do, what am I doing with my personal energy? And let me focus it. Let me focus it on the things that I can control. My effort, how hard I work, my integrity. Focus your energy on the things you can control. Because now, I believe when you can do that, now you have a chance at being the best you can be. Some of you are talented in here, and you're able to be the best in the group, the best in your classroom, without probably a whole lot of effort. You're, you're not being the best you, have to, you can be, but yet you're the best. And I can tell you that's ultimately a dead end street. You have to learn how to be the best you can be. And the only way you can be your, your best is to focus your energy on what you can control and don't focus it on what you can. So for me, it was my, my kind of sort of beacon that sort of drove everything, drove my academics, drove my efforts, was, was my desire to be a football player. I wanted to be a, football, a professional football player. And, I, and everything that I did was a means to that end. That means how I did in school, everything was about preparing myself to get to college so I could get to college and play football in college and go to the pros. But it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way. I was crushed. I was devastated. But an opportunity did come up, and I ended up going to the United States Military Academy at West Point, where I did get to play football for, for another four years. But then I had to go to the Army after I graduated. And, and that application of learning how to be my best, that application of, of survival, and focusing my energy, and being accountable to being my best, to being accountable to being my best self, enabled me to, to be a soldier for, for 25 years. And when things didn't go the way I expected, when things didn't go the way I wanted, getting blown up by an improvised explosive device in Baghdad nearly 15 years ago. This Saturday will be 15 years ago to the day.
Nobody has a plan for that kind of thing in life. Nobody has a plan for cancer. Nobody, you don't have plans for those kind of catastrophic things. You can't, there's too many of them. There's too many variables in life for you to plan for them all. But how do you prepare for it? You prepare for it, guess what? By being your best. By being accountable, by holding yourself to being your best self. Trust me, if you can do that, you can, you can handle anything that this life throws you away. Now, I, I, I get it. You're young. You're invincible. You can defer it. I got time. I can wait. I'll get to that when I'm in high school. I'll get to that when I'm in college. I'll get to that when I'm on my own. But for some of you, it will be too late. You're going to be fake because you don't. We don't know when that moment's going to come. None of us do, or rarely do we do. So now it's that time to build that habit that will become your character. I, I didn't know, I didn't appreciate to the depths of my character that in that moment when I was like, I can't do this. I, 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 I just can't do this. I, I don't, this is not the life I want to live. I tried to quit. I tried to I tried to not participate. But it wasn't me. As bad as this looked, as bad as this felt, quitting was worse. Not being my best self was worse. And so I was like, that's not me. That wasn't that wasn't who I was. So my point to you all today is, is, is just, just be where you are. I, I, you know, if, if I got one singular message about this journey, this part of my journey is, look, every single day you have a chance to hold yourself accountable to be your best self. None of us can relive yesterday, and none of us can live yet tomorrow until you get there. So if you're thinking about yesterday, you're still mad about something, you're still dragging this invisible, this invisible anger that nobody else can see, but, but you're holding on to something that happened yesterday. You're holding on to something that happened yesterday? Why? Can't change it, can you? You're wasting your energies. It's okay. I'm not picking on you, but you're waiting. It doesn't, it's not productive, isn't it? Let it go. Let it go. You'll be free from it. It encumbers you. It's like you're, it's like you're dragging something that nobody else sees. Let it go. And it's good. I mean, and look, we're, we're all guilty of it. It's, it's not. It's, it's part of our flaws as humans. But when you can, when you can recognize that you're worried about something that happened in two days ago or one year ago, then you can let it go. You can begin to let it go. I'm able to accept what happens to me because it's my, through my faith. My, my faith, acceptance, man, when you, when you can accept, doesn't mean you like it. But when you accept it, you release it. When you don't accept it, you fight on and you hold on to it. Anybody play a sport? Raise your hand if you play a sport. You mess up, you ever mess up? And, 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 and you, you put it behind you, you still think about it when you're in the next play. Yeah, see? Let it go. You can only play one play at a time. You can't play the one that just went, you can't play the next one, you can play the one you're in. And that's what life is. Just one day at a time. 
KISS rule. Keep it simple. I don't like to say simple, but it's a KISS rule. Keep it simple. So as I fought through this day at a day, one day at a time, I, I didn't have a vision of what my future looked like. All I could do was just be where I was at. A friend of mine says, hey, would you come talk to my teammates? Sure, why not? I'm present. Talk to them. We end up winning the Super Bowl. I got two Super Bowl rings. I've acted in two movies. I never even acted before. I never played a tree in a school play, much less acted. <laughs> and here I am because I focused on where I was at, not where I wanted to be. I focused where I was at. I know it's tough, I know it's young, and, and there's a whole lot of things you don't know. But you'll find out things you need to know if you, if you, if you push yourself. Just be your best. Push yourself. You'll find out what you like, you'll find out what you don't like. But if you never, if you never put the energy and the effort into what you're doing, you'll never see what the potential is. You'll never really know the answer. So I'm going to say this one more time. Be present. Be where you are. Don't drag yesterday. Let yesterday go. Don't live tomorrow. Be present. If you can be present, now you have a chance to be your best. Because all your energy is here. It's not on yesterday. It's not on tomorrow. You have a chance to be here. And that to me, that equals peace. I, I, can't, I can't do any more than that. I can't be, if I'm present and I'm my best, just, I've laid it all on the line. And I pray the good Lord gives me another day to try it again. That's, that's the key. <clears throat> So with that said, I'll open up the floor for questions. Well, I appreciate the movie star uh, adjective. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, I was ever motivated to be in the movie. Um, the director, Peter Berg, one day called me up and says, I'd like you to be in my movie. And I was like, OK. I mean, that's exactly how it happened. So, you know what? What motivates me is to be my best, to try. I'm like, what do I got to lose? Don't be afraid to fail. I could have gone, well, I've never acted before. I could have come up with a thousand excuses not to do it. I could have said, why not? I got blown up by a bomb and survived. What else can happen to me, right? The movie could have sucked. I got hurt, um, my executive officer, my uh, my exo Jim McGregor, he uh, he got a journal and he passed it around the unit for my soldiers to write a message for me and. Uh, 
you know, 15 years later, I cannot get past pace. I can't get past pace three. So I think the point for me What's so emotional for me is to, to understand and appreciate how they felt about me. And it's, it's overwhelming, you know, that these men and women love me the way that they do, they did. And I'm grateful for that. I said earlier today, you know, our lives, our lives, your lives are not about what you take from this life, but what you live, what you give back to it. Think about that. The value in your life is not what you take, but it's what you leave. And that question sort of made me think of that because I was gone. I mean, it wasn't dead, but I was no longer with my unit. And uh, that journal, it, it said to me, um, gave, me a, gave me an impression of what I left. So how'd you guys get picked for this? What'd you guys do? You in trouble? <laughs> just, just, no? Just not, you know, just not like the detention folks you know, I'm yelling at, trying to yell at you guys? Well, some I'm of them... Just I'm just teasing. Some of them are my film students. All right. Okay, good. Yes, Francis. Cur Colonel Gadsden, with these young people here, they're, they're building relationships. Um, that they may be too young to understand how they may have a lifelong impact. I, mean, I know you and I have talked about the relationships that not only that you and I have, but other mutual friends and the importance of the role of relationships in our lives. Yeah. You know, um, I, 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 I had a chance to talk to some high, high schoolers for, for lunch today, and, um, and, I, and I talked to them about, you know, teens about life being bigger than ourselves. And, and you're, you're, we're all in various teams. Our family is a team. Our, you know, if you're, if, I don't know if it's the film club, you're a team. You're, you, you form groups, you're part of groups of, of like-minded people that are are willing to put a higher cause and a higher goal above their own individual recognition. And that's what I, and, and that kind of gets back to the sort of what you give and not what you take. When you're a part of a team, a team needs you to give. And when you, and, but this giving is an investment. The investment that Frank and I have is as West Point grads, but as football players, that men, the young men that made a sacrifice. We started with a hundred, there were probably a hundred of our classmates that dried out for the football team. By the time we were seniors, there were barely 20 of them. Now some got hurt, some, some decided that, that this was a greater sacrifice than they wanted to make. Frank and I struggled. I mean, we, uh, you know, we weren't at the you know, top end of the, I, mean, I, was in a, I was in a top 10% of the bottom 90% of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> but we got through it. And it's that, it's that fire. It's that investment of going through the fire with each other. 
and making sacrifices that builds these bonds, that builds these relationships that last forever. I mean, we got classmates that we don't know. Or maybe you've seen once in 30 years. But if they called us up and said, hey, I'm how many Fritz, class 89, I was in B2, I need some help. They got it. That's how, that's how thick, that's how special those relationships are. That's how we need. Another question? Anybody? Oh, no Rihanna questions? Nothing? Nobody asked about Rihanna. <laughs> Louder. <clears throat> So look, yeah, if you looked at my transcripts, at least my early ones, you'd probably say you didn't. But, no, I, um, but look, I've gone to grad school twice. Um, so I, I have two graduate degrees and I got an honorary doctorate. I don't know how to take that. But look, academics, it, it, to me, academics and education, it's not about having the answer. I mean, I know there are some people in this room, there's people in this school that can, can memorize stuff backwards. They always got the answer at the top. That to me is, is less impressive. What your education about, what your education really does is it, it's really about problem solving. It's about thinking through problems. It's about knowing that you don't know the answer, but knowing and having a process to solve. Answers are fleeting. Information is fleeting. Technology is constantly, I mean, I, I can't keep up with technology. But I know where to start. So, yeah, so education is, is absolutely important. You, you, it, and, and it doesn't stop. What you want to understand is that your education is lifelong. The minute you believe that you've got all the answers is the minute you begin to, that you're going you're gonna to fall off, you're going to fail eventually. Education is lifelong. It's a lifelong endeavor. And you never, ever want to stop learning. It's what keeps you young. It what keeps you relevant. Any more questions? Right before FSA, too, or the state assessment test, they right. They took their first one yesterday and the day before, so that's kind of cool. These are all eighth graders, too. They're on their way to high school. So, yeah, if, I, if I could just reinforce something that Colonel Gadsden said with his words. You asked about the importance of academics. He says, be your best self today. Every one of us adults that were in this room, we were in middle school at one time. Be, your job right now is to pass middle school, then to go to high school. That's what in America we expect. We're an educated nation. So if you're not being your best self at school, strive it. You don't have to get A's as long as what you got was the best you could do. But if you're not doing your best and being your best self with academics, you're selling yourself short. And Colonel Gatson's message is, is when you're your best self and you perform, that creates opportunities and opens doors. What you do here in school, let's face it, people are going to look at grades. Kids that get good grades and are good students and behave, teachers are going to pick them for good opportunities. Not the students that are constantly causing trouble, falling asleep, not caring. So when you want to have opportunities and do special things, those are rewards for being your best self. Right, Colonel Gatson? Yep. 
you know, the other ones being where we're at, being present, not being overcome by the, mo the moment, not being overcome by the, maybe the, the perceived significance of it. It's just a game. It literally is just a game. And you, you should play it like it's just a game. You know, if you are, if you are finding more effort in that game than you had in the last game, then you're cheating yourself and your team on the other game. Anybody hear that? Everybody hear, bring your A game? AJ, bring your A game. What's that mean? Huh? Do your best. So if you bring your A game, do you always bring your A game or sometimes you're your B game? Huh? Right? So always bring your game. You don't have all you've got is a game. That's all you want is an A game. If you if you're gonna bring your B game, just don't come. So what's next for you? What are you doing next? Well, so I just, um, the uh, I was in one scene of a movie called A Journal for Jordan. Anybody hear about that one? The one that Denzel uh, directed, Denzel Washington. So that just came out in um, December. Michael B. Jordan's in that. So I was in, I was in one scene of that, and um, there was a chance that they, they that they're going to, do another season of uh, NCIS Los Angeles. I might be a kind of a, um, a part-time um, part-time actor in that. So, so awesome. uh, that's on the horizon. Look, yeah. Listen, I still can barely spell actor, and I don't know why we call it, but it's okay. I mean, it's not a it's not a bad gig. I, I do a lot of speaking, probably more. So, so then, but and I have a small co uh, company too. So, um, I'm. I'm uh, my partner and I um, manage a, a services uh, a company that supports a lot of uh, the Department of Defense stuff. So we've got about 85 employees. So. Wow. so, so all those things keep me super busy. Do you live locally, or where do you live? No, I, I live in Alexandria, Virginia. So I actually came here from Boston. So on Monday night, I went to a baseball game in Fenway Park, and then I'm going uh, flying up to New York. Uh, this afternoon, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do some clay shooting on Friday and some ocean fishing on on Saturday, and then fly home yeah. time for Mother's Day. So, job uh, manager? Yeah, me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get. Yeah, they they hire all the things whenever they do that stuff. There's somebody who does that. They got somebody who does your. You got your hair here, but the people that do your hair here don't do the hair on your face. That's somebody else. It's, 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 yeah. uh, uh, no, I'm on. Uh, I'm on. A, uh, I'm on a commercial. I, I flew American. I I've flown on a, a few times. I've been on. Some I flew along with Colin Powell once. Wow. Uh, I'll that word. I was on the, tonight, I was on the Jay Little show with Colin Powell. Uh, I met Prince Harry a few times. Yeah, so all the, the last presidents from President George Bush 41 all the way through. Well, I've met Biden a few times, but it was when he was the vice president. But, about a lot of cool movie stuff, but today, 
at the high school, there was a question that I thought everybody here would benefit from. So I'm going to ask you this. Because we, you talked about how you got here. If you met, or the person who pulled the trigger on the bomb that blew you up, walked into this room right now, what would you say or how would you act? What would you do? Well, I, I'm not mad, you know. We, we, I'm, I guess, so Frank is, uh, I, I, I'm accepted what's happening. I'm not carrying any anger about this. I'm at peace. I'm at peace with this. And that's what set me free. That's what's in, unencumbered me to do and experience all these wonderful things that I could have never imagined. It's because I've, I've accepted it. And my faith is what has allowed me to accept it. You know, sometimes people, you know, Something, sometimes things happen in life and we're like, why did this happen to me? I, I, I want to understand. Well, what is that answer? If you understand why that happened, what does it change? Nothing. So let it go. Let it go. The answer to why something happened sometimes is irrelevant. But we tie up our energy and our emotion in trying to trying to have an answer to something that's not going to change anything. Learn from it and move on from it. Accept it. So 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 it doesn't encumber you. So it doesn't so it doesn't become a drag in your life. Yeah. How long was I left? I I I, I wasn't. Well, okay, so I, I had like this timeline. I was, you know, I was critically wounded. I was in, a, in intensive care and in a coma and all that kind of stuff. After my, I, I, um, they had to take one of my legs and I told them to take the other one. What? Because it was never gonna work. It was that, it was damaged. So I was like, why do I want to keep it? So I, so, so I, at that point, I was already, I was already free. I already accepted what happened. I was, I had, trust me, I, I had a lot going on. I didn't know which way it was up, but I wasn't angry. I wasn't mad. I, I as Frank said, as Frank was kind of alluding to. I knew I wasn't mad because you could have put the man in front of me that did this to me. You could have given me a weapon. And I could have I would put it down. And I could walk away. Or walk away. <laughs> I, that is how I knew. Yeah, I mean, immediately. But that was acceptance. That was forgiveness. I wasn't carrying that. I was carrying a lot of other stuff, but that was missing. And that was, and that was so powerful that that really had me on a path of healing. Because I let it go. Well, I, I did, I did, I did, I did it at the end of life. How, what? I did it at the end of life. One day at a time? I mean, there's no, there's no book or manual. I just took one day at a time. But, and I continue, I stayed on active duty. You saw the, the video. I did another almost eight years. The Army was like, oh, we're going to retire. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm not done. Yeah. Huh? I, uh, so I, uh, I had two jobs. I, um. Well, actually, I went to, while I was recovering, I went to grad school. I went to Georgetown University while I was still going through physical therapy. I still had surgery. I went to educate myself so I could figure out what I wanted to do. And then I realized that I could still soldier. Look, the Army wasn't, I was a lieutenant colonel. The Army wasn't paying me for how fast I could run. They paid me for what's up here and what's in here. So I was like, Hey, hey, what you do in life, it's not about what you're missing or what you don't.
don't have. It's about what you do with what you've got. There's people that got everything and can't get anything done. Anybody see that coach? That football coach is missing his arms and his legs? He didn't stop living his life. If that man can do that, you can do anything. If you stop holding yourself back, you and only you are going to be the greatest impediment in your life. I'm not saying that there's people out there that are not trying to do you harm. I'm not saying there's people out there that are not fair. But that's, that, that, that exists. But I also believe you can overcome it. Overcome it with a smile, not with anger. Overcome it with love, not hate. Uh, I, well, this is well twice today. I spoke at a middle school in, in uh, Montgomery County, Maryland, in March. I spoke at a, a high school in Loudoun County in February. So, I mean, I, I, I say half half dozen times a year, probably. I mean, I I do. I have a lot of different groups that I end up engaging with. So. Nonprofit stuff, fundraising, whole corporate. I was in Hawaii last week. Wow. That was pretty cool. <laughs> huh? A week ago, last week, I was in Kauai. What do you do? Huh? What do you do? I spoke. <laughs> they flew me out there to speak. I flew in a helicopter and took a bunch of pictures. Went to the ocean. It was pretty cool. Huh? You went back to the army when you were No. No. Um, well, I just, I mean, um, what do I got to be afraid of? What, do you, what are you afraid of? Huh? Lizards? <laughs> Why? <laughs> It's a lot of work, and you really, I mean, it's not like you even know what's going on. I, I don't know if, in fact, I'll tell you what my movie experience is when I did Battleship. And you, have you, are you familiar with the movie? Okay, so the very last scene that I did in the movie, you know, when I'm on the stage with Leah Neeson getting an award, I filmed that first. So I literally filmed backwards. So I didn't know what was going on. I was just doing... I was present. What do you want me to do today? And I what I did. I focused on that scene all day. I filmed, and the very first scene I show up in the movie, I did last. And we did that in San Antonio. I filmed in Hawaii, Baton Rouge, San Antonio, and LA. It's, again, it's a task. 
they do all the, they, you guys know more about, they do all that Hollywood and movie magic stuff. They do all that stuff in the, in the editing room. So we, I filmed, we filmed in August to November of 2010. The movie didn't come out until April of 2012. It's like two years ago. I mean, two years later, we've probably seen the movie. Well, I mean, some of it is um, some of it is financing. Like Louisiana, they are able to, you know, they, they it was it was less expensive to film in Louisiana. They did a lot of green screen stuff there. And then, if you're familiar with the movie, it was cheaper for them. It was cheaper to. To work, to go on a military base in a rehab center on a Saturday, then to try to reconstruct what that would look like. Um, so, so those are kind of the kind of things that you got up. So, really, a lot of it is, it is cost. As much as it was, it was more authentic to go to San Antonio and use the Center for Intrepid on a Saturday than to try to create some real rehab center that they were only going to use once. All right, we have one more question. Go ahead, Corey. Oh, was it stressful for you when you get movies? Say again? Was it like a lot of pressure? Yeah. No. I just, look, all I could do was the best I could do. Like, you didn't get mad at me. Hmm? Yep, I had my prosthetics on this. Thank you, everybody. Let's have a round of applause.